Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, the boys are back in town and now on the ice at the CTC. But with Captain Skates beginning, how concerning is it that Igor Sokolov and Shane Pinto are still without a contract? And we continue our organizational value rankings. This group of players have a pivotal season ahead of them. Lots of great content coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 866 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, we want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook. It's the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. A reminder, you can also subscribe wherever you download your podcast. We are free and available on YouTube. We have a Patreon now. We've got all sorts of ways you can support the show, but the best way is to watch through every single day. We are back to five shows a week, and the Senators are back on the ice at the CTC. Today is Friday, September 1st, and the Sens are so back, man. That that little cut clip of the skates and seeing Claude Giroux back, teaching Thomas Shabbat and all that, we're so close to Sens hockey. Yep, it's a great feeling, and Ross, now we are officially in the month where Senators hockey will be played. So you, you don't have to put any kind of uh, precursors ahead of it. We are in September. Rookie camp starts in a couple weeks. Let's go. Let's go indeed. Really excited to see how this team shapes up. But to shape up, you got to get everybody signed up. And right now, Shane Pinto still at home waiting. I mean, Igor Sokolov has been in Stittsville all summer. No surprise he was still on the ice with the Senators yesterday. People are like, is he allowed to? Skate on the ice, you know, official team. You facility. can't stop him. Try to stop Igor from getting on the ice. Try. He's going to get out there in preseason without a contract. Just play without insurance. <laughs> well, hopefully not. I mean, geez, like it, it can't come to that point. And the Igor one especially, like that should be so easy to clean up. Like just get that out of your way. Like Ryan Bonus, like that's been sitting on his desk for a long time. Why not just make things easy on everybody? Sign off it. Give Belleville's leading point getter the uh, AHL salary he deserves and be done with it. Well, the thing is, they open their wallets for a- every other person. And especially AHLers, right? Yeah. It's ridiculous, especially if they're like $40,000 off or something on just AHL salary. If they were battling between one way, two way. Yeah, that's that's a, a big difference over yeah. the course. But my understanding is that it is. Not a whole lot. They're they're kind of stuck in the mud over. Nobody wants to move. We'll see if when new ownership officially comes in, he goes, hey, we're not starting this, this season with any holdouts. We want to get the boys all back together and see how that goes. Shane Pinto, we've spent enough time this summer discussing what we think the potential contract could be. So I'm going to ask it to you like this, Pilsy. What are the ramifications day one of training camp if Shane Pinto is not there? I, I feel like... You know, obviously, it's not like your number one center holding out or, you know, your your starting goalie or anything like that. It's, it's your third line center. But that plays a big part in the structure of this team. We saw what happened last year. Sure, Josh Norris is an elevated center over Shane Pinto. But we saw what happened to the roster structure when one guy isn't there. And it just messes the whole team up regardless of how important you think that player is like the Senators struggled with bottom six scoring last season. So to have arguably your top bottom six guy, not around for training camp because they can't get a contract done. That's bad vibes, bad vibes for sure. It really would be. I hope it doesn't come to that. Right. We, we saw it happen with Brady Kachuk. I know he signed before the home opener, but he still missed training camp. We, 
we don't need those vibes. We need the energy of having everybody there, especially Shane Pinto. Guy missed the entirety of two seasons ago. Comes back, plays all 82. Everyone's all excited. Now what? He's going to miss games just because they can't agree to terms on a contract? He has 99 games under his belt. I can't I can't believe that he's asking to break the bank. I, I don't think that he is, Ross. I don't I don't think uh look, I don't want to place blame anywhere here. We already kind of put put the ball in the sense court with Igor, but I I really think that uh this is more a situation that the senators are trying to figure out what their plan is, how to move money out to properly pay Shane Pinto, or they're going for that that strategy of, Hey, Shane, take a discount this year and we'll have your back in future years, which if I'm Shane Pinto and his agent, I don't blame them for being like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. And it puts everybody in a tough spot here. You almost think they probably should have taken care of this before bringing in Tarasenko potentially. Well, that was my original thought Ross. But then after I was like, this is kind of a bold, but maybe I like this strategy by the sense. Cause that puts the pressure on Pinto being like, Hey, we already brought someone else in. Now, mind you, obviously, different position, different type of player. But it's like, we spent that money. Here's the money we have left. You can have the money we have left, and we can move forward. But, I mean, obviously, I think it's like, what, 800000 Like, that is that is not a, enough value for Shane Pinto. Even on, the, even on a discount deal, he should be getting more than that. Agreed. Now, what is your level of concern out of 10 that uh, that these guys won't be in the lineup on opening night? I'll, I'll say a, a five. I'm at a five. Okay, we are going to have a weekly update yeah. here on Locked On Senators. Every Friday, I'm going to ask you your level of concern. And we are only right. two Fridays away from the first rookie tournament game against the New Jersey Devils. That will be going on in Buffalo. They play Friday, New Jersey, Pittsburgh Saturday, and Montreal on Monday. That's the weekend of the 14th. Of September, We'll have our coverage plans for that a little later on, closer to the date. But we are back to our organizational value rankings. We have gone through numbers 60 to 29 already. And now we're getting in to, I would go beyond intriguing, I would say exciting prospects in the system and guys who have already made their mark at the NHL level. We'll get into those rankings next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You guys already know it. They are the trusted online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. They're North America's number one sportsbook for crying out loud. Why would you go anywhere else? Beats me. FanDuel is where I go when I want to place a wager on any sport. Baseball is in the thick of things here. You got to get your future bets in for hockey, for football, for basketball. Make sure you're diversifying your online sportsbook uh, portfolio. You can't just have money lines all the time. You got to have a little extra futures kicking in the bank. But if you want to take a swing at betting MLB on FanDuel, you can get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. So whether you win or lose, you're going to get that money with your first bet. And it's on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And when you win, you get paid instantly. You got to love that. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You can visit the Glebe Central Pub in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street. When you head there, make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. It's the best place to watch the game, to be entertained, because they have trivia nights, they have comedy nights, they have all sorts of live events that make you feel a part of the family at the Glebe Central Pub. Not only that, their food menu is delicious, they've got tasty drinks, great specials as well. So whether you're in the area heading down to the Lansdowne Market on the weekend, if you're going down to watch the Red Blacks or Atletico Ottawa, you can always make sure to stop at the Glebe Central Pub. It's a bye week for Ottawa this week, but September 8th, next Friday, it's a home game against Hamilton. So if you're heading down to see that, stop by the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street. The Sens shuttle is returning soon. But for now, it's all about the vibes at the Glebe Central Pub. So go have a drink. You're among friends at the Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street, right in the heart of the Glebe. All 
right, Filzy. Still no update on Mad Sogard's helmet. I'm on the case, though. <laughs> I am on the case. I sent him a message. I said, we're ready to see the helmet whenever you are. And he goes, I'm ready to see it, too. I'll let you know when I get it. <laughs> oh man, I can't I can't wait to see it. I goalie masks, like obviously I love all goalie gear, but the masks is always my favorite. Ross, I'm, I'm a little jealous. Uh you had some designed masks growing up. I was just a house league player, so I I always just had the black mask. I wish I could have got a little more creative with it. Just the one, really. The other one was uh, a stock one. It was oh, uh, nice. And it almost foreshadowed me living in Winnipeg. Because it's the Johan Hedberg Manitoba Moose helmet. Oh, nice. That's awesome. When I was nine years old. I thought about going with one of the stock ones, but I I was one of those goalies. I didn't want to draw attention to myself. I just wanted the the opponents to be like, who is this lanky guy with mismatched pads and uh, blocker and catcher and uh, glove and... uh, (laughs) And then I would just shut the door on them. So. Heck yeah, let's go. We've got a goalie on today's list of organizational Ooh. value rankings. And if you want some more in-depth analysis on these guys, and not only that, maybe a sneak peek at the list to come, make sure you head over to Patreon where you can subscribe and uh, help support the show directly. Ooh. It would go We're, we're giving sneak peeks out on Patreon, Ross? I think so, yeah. Ooh. We're going to graphics there. We're going to try to get some bonus content for the people who want to directly support the show, just an extra way. We get people asking sometimes, hey, like, do you guys get paid for this? And the answer is, you know what? We get taken care of by Locked On, but if you want to go above and beyond and uh, help out the show, we would uh, hat tip to that and maybe get you a drink at Martian Palooza or something like that. But for now, let's head back to our organizational value rankings. All right, coming in at number 29. On our list of the most valuable members of the Senators organization, it's Angus Crookshank. Crooker, our guy, friend of the show, and my God, did he have an amazing season with some good health. He played in all but one game in Belleville, and he made it count, Ross, that's for sure. He led the team in goals with 26. He had 21 assists, 47 points in 71 games, and... He was a stud for that offense. He also led the team in power play goals, 12, tied with the Arbenti, and led the team in shots with 188. I went through his game logs, Ross, and there was only seven games out of 71 that he went without a shot. So Crooker, his idea was let's get pucks on net, let's put the puck in the net, and he was pretty successful at that. And I remember us joking last year when we had Igor on, and we were saying you could take a tape measure with all of Angus's 26 goals and maybe get to the center ice dot because everything is around the net. Yeah. He's putting shots out from everywhere, but I think a lot of his damage was done jamming away at loose pucks in front. He's such a high motor player that he's, he's never going to give up on a play. And I hate to use this comparable because he's, he's one of my least favorite players in the league, but it is a situation where you hate him when you play against him. You love him when you're on your team, but he's got some Brendan Gallagher in him. And I think I say that in a complimentary way where he's not going to be denied to get into the dirty areas. And I I think I appreciate that about him, especially at his size, you know, under six feet tall, but he's not scared of anybody. You could tell that from the COVID season, right? There was that picture. I don't know if it was Logan Stanley or one of those mutants in Manitoba. And uh, it's like him looking up at him with just the biggest grin on his face, right? Ready to go. And, and not worried about a thing. So I think Angus took a lot of strides on the defensive side of the puck after Christmas as well. I know that uh, Troy Mann sat down with him. David Bell uh, did as well when he took over. I was like, hey, I know that plus minus, it's it's kind of popping out a little bit right now. Yeah, you've been unlucky in certain situations, but let's focus on the defensive side. And I think David Bell was pretty impressed uh, the way he spoke with us about how dedicated Angus was to making the right changes and to get himself into a position where he can be a valuable asset at both ends of the ice. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, like, I I think, and I think we talked to David Bell about this, like when it comes to a player like Angus, sometimes you got to look at these guys and say, Hey, I know you're used to putting up a lot of points, but your way to get into the NHL, at least to start 
is probably going to be in the bottom six. Let's be realistic. So you have to round out your game so that you can have some of those bottom six qualities that you're not just relying on putting up points because you're not going to get the opportunities and the minutes and the power play time you get in Belleville in Ottawa. That's that's just a matter of fact, right? So you got to find ways to have a B game and a C game. And that's what Crooker worked on. Oh, yes, he did. And he just makes me smile the way like his intensity is, I think, Something that's, um, what do you call it, transferable to his teammates? There's a word I'm looking, contagious. There they, you go. Can we get a, we haven't had one in a while. Can we get word of the day, contagious? <laughs> yeah, sure. That's a great word coming out of COVID years, contagious. Spread from one person to another by direct or indirect contact. And for him, I think it's the indirect contact, just knowing Mads was telling us last week, Crooker's ready before the game, like half an hour. You know, he's dialed <laughs> in. And yeah. I think that like he he has leadership qualities in the fact that oh, yeah. the way he prepares, he leads by example. And if he's back in Belleville, he does need waivers, I believe, this year. But if he's back in Belleville, Pilsy, I think you're going to see him with a letter on his chest. I could say that much. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was looking at uh, Crooker and I was like, what does Crooker need to do to elevate to that next level? Now, we talked about Ooh. rounding out his game. Waivers exempt. My apologies. OK, nice. Um, and Plus- I was... Must be because he missed that full year. Yeah, yeah, with the injury. Um, I was thinking, like, man, if Crooker could do in Belleville what Batherson did in Belleville, that would really raise a lot of eyebrows uh, with the upper management in Ottawa. And then I was like, how far off is Crooker from putting up Batherson numbers in Belleville? Well, Batherson, when uh, uh, were we there in 2018, 2019? Yes, uh, he put up 62 points. So Crooker with 47, not that far off. And then the other year he was in Belleville, 54 points. So it's not that crazy for if Crooker has another good season and elevates and gets into the high 50s, like gets another 10 points, which I think he could do. He's putting up Batherson-like numbers in the AHL. And I think that would really go far for him to getting a, a shot at playing in the NHL at some point. I really hope it's sooner than later. That guy's first first lap is going to be electric. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we've been following him since since his draft and his time at the University of New Hampshire, and he's been a longtime friend of the show. And I just appreciate the mindset and the, um, the calm demeanor that he has off the ice. I think he's an amazing interview, great guy. Just uh, And I got a chance to, you know, spend a little bit of time with him when they were in Manitoba, um, you know, just walking to and from uh, the hotel. So when you're looking at – what uh, what Angus brings to a team and a locker room, everybody needs that type of player. It's it's he needs to just beat out someone for their job because right now he's on the outside looking in in terms of being waivers exempt and being able to go back down. And the organization can almost use it as a excuse or a reason saying, hey, you missed that full year. I know you played all last year, but let's keep you on the right track and slow and steady wins the race because Let's remember, Angus has been in the organization for a while. He was a 2018 draft pick. Here's Brady Kachuk. So it's, you know, year seven for him right now. But I do think that, you know, the long road does pay dividends when you get there. And I I do see an NHL future for Angus. Uh, Math guy, 2018 to 23 is five years. Five years? Okay. Well, no, he's going because 2018 draft. So this is year. Yeah, year five. (laughs) <laughs> yeah not a math guy and we'll hey leave. we're rounding up for our buddies if you're a friend of the show we'll round up for you you're dang right <laughs> you will angus crookshank comes in at number 29 that's up two spots from where he was last year he was 31 last year 30 the year before and 45th before turning pro so it's been an upwards trend for angus crookshank All right, coming in at number 28 on our Locked On Senators organizational value rankings, it's Oscar Pedersen, Pistol Pete. This guy, just an absolute goal scorer against his peers. Oh, my God. Yeah, is that ever the case? 24 games in J20, 23 goals, basically a goal per game pace. And then he had 10 assists attached onto that. So 33 points in 24 games with the J20 League now. Obviously, that's very impressive and eye-popping. So uh, the people at Rogla, they said, hey, we want to give you a chance in the SHL. Normally, you just get a taste. The coach doesn't want to use you. You play a couple minutes a night. And then before you hit that 99 uh, minutes played mark, they send you back down so they don't have to give you the bonuses. 
not our guy Pistol Pete. He had a lot of time in the SHL, more than in J20, in fact, 29 games in the SHL. Now, only one goal, one assist, but the real eye-popping thing is they didn't send him back down to stop him from getting to that bonus level that we learned about the SHL does. So that's got to be impressive. The coach must have said, hey, I, I like having Pedersen in the lineup and I want to keep him around. Yeah, he also had a really good showing, I thought, at the World Junior Championships where we expect him to play again next year. Just a tenacious player. I keep going back to it, but seeing him rocking number 27, I mean, it makes me think of it even more. It's it's Patrick Hornquist. Like, that's the type of prototypical yep. power forward that you want and hope Oscar Pedersen to be at his peak. He's still putting on weight, but, like, he was standing beside Philip Nordberg when we interviewed him at Dev Camp, and, like, I mean, Norberg's obviously bigger, but it's not like he towered over Pedersen. I thought Pedersen's a pretty, you know, big guy. Signed his NHL contract, so you got to give him some, you know, credit for that. He tells us he spent over a month in Canada this offseason, stayed over and played in that uh, World Junior Summer Showcase in Michigan. But just wanting to be under the watchful eye of, you know, Shelly Kettles and being around the Ottawa Senators organization, I think he's setting himself up where after next year, I don't know this, but I would expect him to come over and make his jump to whether it's the NHL or AHL. I think that's when we're going to see him come over. Yeah, I, I would like that. And I think as far as this season goes, Ross, I believe Rogla doesn't have an Allsvenskan uh, league team. Unfortunately, if you look at his last year, he was loaned out to Christian Stats IK to play two games in the Allsvenskan league, which is unfortunate because I don't think he's quite ready for full-time SHL, but he clearly, clearly does not need to spend any more time in the J20. So I feel like the Allsvenskan would be perfect spot for him. So maybe it's through a loan again, but uh, I I'd like to see him play consistent minutes there. So consistent minutes, what else is on your um, most important facets for his development this season? I mean, goal scoring obviously isn't an issue. Uh, so maybe trying to become a little bit more of a dual threat just so that can help your goal scoring. Because if if guys know you're going to go for the shot, they're going to cheat shot. But if you've got a good pass as well, you're going to get more open space to use that shot. And I think that would help Oscar Pedersen. For me, it's just playing one team. <laughs> I know I say that. I mean, good luck, yeah. So often, but now that he's 19, he'll be 20 in February, like, I just I don't want to see him moving around at all. Like last year, J20, SHL, two games there, as you said, with the All Svenskin and World Juniors. Like, hey, World Juniors, SHL. Just just rock with that. Let's let's see a little bit more and more. And Rogue was always near the top of the table in the SHL. So hopefully he can be a part of a winner because Pierre Dorian loves winners. Oscar Pedersen last year made his debut on our organizational value rankings, or sorry, yeah, he did, at 39. So he's up 11 spots. He cl clearly showed a lot to us and a lot to yeah. the Senators, earning his first NHL contract. All right, coming up next, we will get back to our organizational value rankings. We've got a prospect. We also have a goalie and a player who has already signed a one-way NHL contract. Who are they? We'll discuss next. You're listening the Locked On Senators. Welcome back to Locked On Senators. <laughs> I'm Ross Levitan alongside Brandon Piller and the Roadcaster got me there. It actually sounded nice though. That that wasn't bad, especially for, um, for just a quick transition. It, it's nice, but uh, people are expecting a double word of the day here. So what do you got for them? I've got Number 27 on our organizational <laughs> value rankings. I've got Stephen Halliday here, and I thought about putting Halliday up even higher, but he jumped 20 spots as it is. He started out last year at 47 on our rankings. Now he's up at 27, and the disher has a ton of reasons why. Yeah, I mean, the... The the gift that keeps on giving, the dish that keeps on dishing, Stephen Halliday. I mean, the, that moment where I said he's not a disher, I feel like he's just been on a tear trying to prove to me that he is, in fact, a disher. Uh, a Ver great verbal meme, verbal meme, Michael Jordan. And I took that personally. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah, that's Stephen Halliday with uh, my little throwaway comment there. Yeah. Um, but in his debut season in the NCAA with Ohio State University, in 40 games, nine goals, 
and 32 apples, dishing it out for 41 points in 40 games. Pretty damn impressive, especially for a you know, an Ohio State team that isn't one of the top, top teams in college hockey. And he was able to carve out a role for himself and put up big numbers. One of the guys I was most surprised with when they put out the roster for development camp, I didn't realize the guy's 215 pounds. And that makes me more and more confident that maybe he can play center at the National Hockey League level. I think that the one knock on him, if you go to uh, Elite Prospects and their their draft guide, Every single time Mitch Brown was the scout who watched him over and over again, every game report is like unreal hands, made three sick plays, scored a goal, had two assists, can't skate, won't be a pick. And it's just like every single one, it's like despite the flaw of skating, he's so talented and so smart that he's able to manipulate defenses and pick them apart. So I love that he also spent a lot of time in Ottawa this summer working with Shelly Kettles, if this guy can put one, two steps onto his initial, and like once he gets going, he's a big guy, he's going to be able to, it's just the acceleration, chop, chop, you'll be able to, you know, get up and down the ice a little bit quicker. I think that's what I'm hoping he gets into his game this year. And then, I mean, it's all gravy from there because in the offensive zone, he, he would be way, if he skated like, let's say a Zach Stapchuk, he might be top 10 in a couple of years. Like he's that yep. talented. It's just a one area. I think just work on a little bit of pace, a little bit of skating and the sky's the limit for Stephen Halliday. Yeah. We, we've got high hopes and we're very confident in Stephen Halliday's potential. And if any of uh, people listening or watching were at dev camp, you would probably agree with us because it was, it was so easily known that he was the most impressive player at Def Camp. Like it wasn't even really close, in my opinion. Everyone, everyone we talked to was buzzing about Stephen Howdy. Pierre, Pierre Dorian, any of the fans we talked to, the coaching staff, like anyone we had any interaction with, the first thing out of their mouth was, "You've been watching Stephen Halliday? Like, man, Halliday looks good." And Look out. I think he's going to have an absolute monster sophomore season for Ohio State. Yeah, and despite losing his line mates, Tate Singleton went pro, and um, he's he's going to have opportunities. And, he's the number one center on the team. And the captain, uh, according to EP at least, I checked the rosters, the captain is no longer there, and their starting goalie is gone as well. So this is going to be a major shakeup roster-wise uh, as far as Ohio State goes. So Let's see if Stephen Halliday can keep us supporting and elevating this team. I don't see why not, man. I don't I'm see why not be, either. I'm not going to bet against him. Unsigned right now, obviously, all NCAA guys are. But the way he's jumped up this rankings, I don't know what's next for Stephen Halliday, but we're going to be watching every step of the way. Just a little bit more, a little bit more. But like you said, everybody we talked to at Dev Camp said, watch Stephen Halliday. The guy is the real deal. Then we go into the rink. First thing he does, boom, one hand on his stick puts it in to the back of the net. Stephen Halliday comes in on our organizational value rankings at number 27. All right, coming in at number 26 on this year's organizational value rankings, it's Levy Marilainen, another goalie, up seven spots from 33 where he found himself on this, year, on this list last year, got an NHL debut, got his AHL debut, had a shutout, and led the Finnish Elite League, the Liga, in shutouts with eight. Yeah, I mean, this guy's resume is absolutely incredible for his age. Like, he dominated in Carpat in Liga, like you mentioned, at, at 42 games, a 2.02 goals against, a .918 save percentage, 18-13-7 record, and it bears repeating eight, eight shutouts in Liga as uh, a young 21-year-old. So... Levy Marilyn, and this is a guy that I think during the draft, well, no, I know during the draft, nobody had a damn clue who he was. We asked all our prospect uh, analysis guys, all the online scouting reports, nobody had any clue who he was. Now people are aware of who Levy Marilyn is. Yes, and then he came over to the Kingston Frontenacs yep. in the OHL and wasn't a great year. For that team, they underperformed, and yeah. I would say he probably did too. I think he had like an 880 save percentage. It just wasn't a good year. So he goes back to Liga where Carpat is a goalie factory yeah. from Pecorine to, to many others. I want to say Mika Kippersoff is out of that program as well, but I just love 
the progression of his game. World Juniors, he was okay. Better than he was in the canceled one. But I, I just see him as a guy where he just needs to take the next step in terms of being, you know, mobile and mobile enough to be able to make the second saves, right? I, I find that he the first save was not the issue with Marilinen, but sometimes I find found him kind of, you know, not able to get there. Like with Mads, he's more so just like diving all over the place. Whereas for Levy, it's like, I just want to see him a little more compact and a little bit smoother around the crease, but that'll come with experience. I'm sure. Yeah. And then what he lacks in kind of the second saves and rebounds, like you're mentioning, he makes up for when it's mano a mano, like one-on-one breakaways, penalty shots, shootouts. This guy's an absolute wall. Like it is tough to get past Levy Maryland. And he's very confident when there's no other factors. It's just him trying to stop the opposing player coming at him and all eyes are on him. And he has no issue being put in that situation. In fact, he thrives there. So that's where Levy Maryland, especially in uh, situations where you're getting into shootouts or there's a penalty shot, or maybe it's your team is on the power play and the PK gets a breakaway off, uh, you know, a bounce off the boards past the defenseman. He's going to be right there, and he's going to mop up a lot of mistakes that defensemen make. He's 3-0 and in his AHL career, right? So he's got that going for him right off the bat. He's a guy where he, I mentioned the shutout in his first game. Yeah, 933 save percentage in four AHL games. In the league, the, the stats jump off the page, right? A 202 goals against. He earned that contract in the National Hockey League. And, man, him, Mads, Mando. Like, that is great depth, oh, in yeah. my opinion, in the organization that is ready to be called up if need be. I don't think Ottawa is going to find themselves in the position they were last year where, you know, you're just, you know, why are we going to have to go to these guys? Now they all have another year of experience. And I, I do think that the Levy Marilyn and being over here for the first time in a full season, right, not going to junior, being able to be a pro over here in North America, I think it's going to go a long way. So I'm really excited to see what's next for Levy Marilyn. All right, coming in at number 25 on our organizational value rankings, it's Jacob Bernard Docker. He earned a two-year, one-way NHL contract. And what's next for him? Well, I can tell you what was latter for him is last year, he, we, he's actually gone down a couple of years in a row, Pilsy. But I think it's more so just him reaching his potential of a guy who less is more, right? He's down four spots year over year. But I do think that overall, you can still be pleased with how he's developed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he he is a first round pick. So there's a lot of expectations. He's been pegged early on as a guy that could be Thomas Shabbat's partner. Um, I really think Ross last year was his big chance to make an impression. And it didn't exactly go the way he probably wanted it to, especially now you look at Chikrin's there. Chikrin's likely going to be Thomas Shabbat's partner. That's a guy you're not going to beat out. So JBD's best opportunity now is third pair right shot defenseman and he's got to beat out a vet like Travis Hamannick that we mentioned brings a lot to the table that no one else on that decor does as far as veteran uh experience and leadership goes so when you have to turn heads in a training camp like Jacob Bernard Docker does not only like to make the team I think is pretty solid that that one-way contract I think is is a pretty good indicator but how would a guy who's known for less is more stand out is it just like making sure every pass is on the tape yeah, I think it's going to be tough because, like, we've talked about guys, like you, you said with Igor, like he's got to he's got to play physical and make oh, he's his gotta fight someone. Yeah, or fight someone, as you said. Yeah, he's he's got to show himself that way. Uh, or there's guys like Crooker where you want to see him pulling off good plays and scoring goals and things like that. Whereas JBD, that's not the case. I think for JBD, and I, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying he doesn't do this, but this is what I I would recommend for him is show the Senators that you're going to be more prepared than anyone. Like be the first guy on the ice, last guy off type stuff. Be putting in extra reps at the gym. Be working with Shelly Kettles more. Be working with the player development team more. Really show them that, hey, whatever I got to do, I will do it and I will go above and beyond because he's not going to get many more opportunities if uh, this year doesn't work out for him, Ross, because this decor is, is full. There's lots of prospects coming up. Tyler Clevin coming up as well. They've got guys, uh, Matim Paolo, they've got guys coming in that can take that role. It's no longer just his spot to fill. So show them that you're going to put the extra mile in. You're going to put the extra effort in. And I think that could go a long way. 
And one thing about JBD, and, and he's always been a defensively conscious player, I want to see him be strong and physical in front of the net. Clear guys out, because that's what Hamannick does well. Everything that Hamannick does well, you should be doing equal. And then yep. also show your youth and your poise and your puck movement and maybe don't beaver tap every single guy your time your partner has the puck. But all that aside, like JBD, man, I'm expecting like this is this is the year for JBD, right? Like enough of like the hey, I know it's these defensemen take longer to develop. Fifth year in the organization, Pilsy, as I as there I know, with a guy drafted in 2018. But I just think this is such an important year for him. Like I don't I don't care how many points he has. I really no. don't. Like we can pull it up right now in terms of the graphic, but like points do not matter for JBD. Be a guy when you're on the ice. There's no danger. It's all good. It's all good. The poise needs to be personified in JBD. And it's not like he didn't get an opportunity, Ross, last year in the NHL. 19 games played, and he averaged over uh, 16 minutes a game. So he had his shots. He had his opportunities. And they decided to go elsewhere for other call-ups throughout the season. So I think, really, he's got to look in the mirror and say, this this has to be my year that I show the Ottawa Senators they, they need me in this lineup. Jacob Bernard Docker coming in at number 25 on our organizational value rankings. He's been on the list all four years and it's gone 17, then 15, then 21, and now 25 where he finds himself. But he also finds himself with a two year one way contract worth $805,000. He's got the inside track to either be the sixth or seventh defenseman on the team. A very fun training camp battle I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Travis Hamnick, Jacob Bernard Docker, jockeying for position there. All right, Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts for me is, everyone, thanks for following along. Back to five uh, days a week. And like Ross mentioned, if you guys are looking for an extra little way to support the show, support the boys, check us out on Patreon. And Pilsy, it's actually six days a week because this Sunday, the next <laughs> ring of honor. So stay tuned oh, for that and more. Have a great weekend, everyone. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. <laughs>